Shalom Israel, this is Bishop Nathaniel. The Israelites have been scattered across the four corners of the earth, as prophesied in Deuteronomy, the 20th chapter. Here in Israel, united in Christ, we need your help to recover the remnant of our people, teach them the gospel. Please help us, support us, and join or donate to the Booster Club today. Shalom. Hey, Shalom Israel, Mosai in Christ blessed. My name is Captain Mattathias. And I'm Officer Losias. All right, we have another 15 minutes with the captains today. We're going to go over the topic of Deborah, okay? Many of you coming from the Christian church uh, believe that Deborah was a uh, quote-unquote leader or someone who usurped authority over men, which is not the case. She was a judge in Israel uh, that the Mosai God used uh, as an intercessory uh, to give the people instruction and judgment, okay? So now we're going to get some understanding on just that. Let's start off with the book of Exodus chapter 15 and 20. Uh, we're going to go over what it means to be a prophetess, okay? Watch this. The book of Exodus chapter 15 and verse 20. Come on. And Miriam, the prophetess. The what? The prophetess. Uh-huh. The sister of Aaron. Come on. Took a timbrel in her hand. Mm -hmm. And all the women went out after her. And with, all the who? And all the women went out after her. So that's the, the point right there. All of the women followed Miriam. Okay. Uh, read on. And all the women went out after her uh -huh. with timbrels and with dances. So she led what? She led women in a song, okay, mm -hmm. um, and, and, uh, in music, okay? So that's an example of Miriam still being a prophetess, but she's doing it according to the scriptures. All right, give me another example. Give me on um, Luke chapter 2, verse 36. All right, I like this one right here. Uh, Luke chapter 2, verse 36. Watch this. The book of Luke chapter 2 and verse 36. Come on. And there was one, Anna, a prophetess. A what? A prophetess. Come on. The daughter of Phinuel mm -hmm. of the tribe of Asher. Okay, she, of the tribe of Asher. Come on. She was of a great age mm -hmm. and had lived with an husband seven years from her virginity. All right, so it says, and lived with her husband seven years from her virginity. Now it's going to go into the attributes of what a prophetess does. Okay, come on. Verse 37. And she was a widow of four score and four years, mm -hmm. which departed not from the temple. Which did what? Departed not from the temple. Come on. But served God with fasting and prayers night and day. That's what she did. She served God with fasting and prayers night and day. She served God with fasting and prayers night and day. All right. A lot of you uh, coming from that Christianity mindset, y'all are confused. Y'all believe that a prophetess is someone who should be in the in the what in the pulpit? That's what they yeah in the pulpit. Try to be a leader. Yeah, try to be a leader or be over men. It's just not the case. Now we're gonna go to the scriptures to show where that mindset comes from. A lot of you believe uh, a prophetess is this, but the Bible is instructing us otherwise. Give me that in Revelations two and twenty. The book of Revelation, chapter 2 and verse 20. Come on. Notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee, uh -huh. because thou sufferest that woman Jezebel, which calleth herself a prophetess. She calls herself a what? A prophetess. Uh -huh. To teach and to seduce my servants to commit fornication. Come on. And to eat things sacrificed unto idols. That's the thing right there. Women aren't supposed to teach. That's number one. Give me that in uh, 1 Timothy chapter 2. Women are not supposed to teach. I want you to start at verse um, 10. Watch this. The book of 1 Timothy, chapter 2 and verse 10. Uh-huh. But which cometh woman professing godliness. If a woman is professing godliness like we read about Anna in Luke chapter 2, verse 36, come on. 
with good works. With what? With good works. That's going into what? She's always there to be a help. She's fasting and praying, willing to do the service and the will of God. Come on. Verse 11. Mm -hmm. Let the woman learn in silence. Let the woman do what? Learn in silence. Read on. With all subjection. With all subjection unto who? The men that the Most High God set up. Come on. But I suffer not a woman to teach. The most I said he suffers what? Not a woman to teach. Or? Nor to usurp authority over a, the man. Nor to usurp authority over the man. It didn't say the women because what? We read an example back in the book of Exodus. We read an example back in the book of Exodus about Miriam. That's perfectly fine. She can usurp authority over the women, mm. but not the man. Right. Okay? Let's go back to Revelations 2. Then we'll dive into uh, Deborah. Watch this. The book of Revelation, chapter 2 and verse 20. Come on. Notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee, because thou sufferest that woman Jezebel, which calleth herself a prophetess, mm -hmm. to teach and to seduce my servants to commit fornication. That committing fornication is if you are a partaker or you support what she's doing, mm. which is outside of the order of, uh, of what God established, that means you are now guilty of that same sin. Read on. And to eat things sacrificed unto idols. Come on. And I gave her space to repent of her fornication, and she repented not. So this is uh, when you read up to the church of Thyatira, okay? Give, he gave her a chance to repent of her wickedness, but she didn't want to do it. Just like your, what, your Juanita Bynum's out there, your Joyce Myers out there, which she's a heathen anyway, shouldn't be teaching our, our Bible anyway. Right. But, oh, and I don't want to just uh, single out Christianity. You got some camps out there right now who have sisters teaching on the streets, which is completely out of order. As a matter of fact, play that clip. Yeah, you to say, babe? Sisters, I know you hear me because my voice is loud and I'm going to get up on this mic and roar like a lioness. You don't love yourself. Look how you dressed. Look how you dressed. All right, give me uh, the book Ezekiel 13 and 17. Watch this. The book of Ezekiel, chapter 13 and verse 17. Come on. Likewise, thou son of man, set thy face against the daughters of thy people, mm -hmm. which prophesy out of their own heart. That's the key right there. I know sisters want to put in their brick, but hey, there's a way for you to put in your brick. Support the men. That's what you do. Support the troops. Right. He did not call you out to be on the front line. You need to play your role, okay? Read this again. Verse 17. Uh -huh. Likewise, thou son of man, set thy face against the daughters of thy people, Come on. which prophesy out of their own heart, and prophesy thou against them. And that's exactly what we're doing right now. We're prophesying against that type of spirit. So now, let's go to the topic at hand. Let's go to the book of Judges, the fourth chapter. We're going to jump around a little bit. But I want you to start at Judges 4 and verse 4. The book of Judges, chapter 4 and verse 4. Come on. And Deborah, a prophetess. A what? A prophetess. Come on. The wife of Lapdoth. Mm -hmm. She judged Israel at that time. She judged Israel at that time. So she was a married woman who was in subjection to her husband. Okay. Not loud mouth, not talking bad about him. No, she was in subjection. We're going to find that out. Read on. Verse 5. And she dwelt under the palm tree of Deborah between Ramah and Bethlehem. Mm -hmm. and Bethel. And Bethel and uh -huh. Mount Ephraim. Come on. And the children of Israel came up to her for judgment. All right. So the Most High God uh, instituted or placed her, all right, there at that point in time mm -hmm. to judge the matters between the children of Israel. Come on. Verse 6. And she sent and called Barak the son of Abinonam, out of Kadesh Naphtali, uh -huh. and said unto him, Hath not the Lord God of Israel commanded, saying, Go and draw toward Mount Tiber? The reason why we want to focus right here is because, remember, <coughs> excuse me, the Most High God, he speaks to who? He speaks to his prophets. Right. All right, let's go to that real quick. Let's go to Amos chapter 3. The book of Amos, chapter 3, and verse 7. Come on. Surely the Lord God will do nothing, 
but he revealed his secret unto his servants, the prophets. Right. He reveals his secrets unto the servants, the prophets. So now let's go back to uh, Judges chapter 4 and verse 6. Watch this. Judges 4 and verse 6. Uh -huh. And she sent and called Barak, the son of Abinoam, out of Kadesh Naphtali, and said unto him, Hath not the Lord God of Israel commanded, saying, Go and draw toward Mount Tabor, and take with thee ten thousand men of the children of Naphtali, and of the children of Zebulon? Right, so she did what? She asked the question to him, all right, because the Most High revealed that to her, but the Most High already told him to do it. Read it again from the top. Watch this. Verse 6. And she sent and called Barak, the son of Abinoam, out of Kadesh Naphtali, and said unto him, Hath not the Lord God of Israel commanded, saying, You see that? Has not God told you to do this? Read on. Go and draw toward Mount Tabor, and take thee with thee ten thousand men of the children of Naphtali, and of the children of Zebulon. Read on. And I will draw unto thee to the river of Kishon, Sierra, the captain of Jabin's army, with his chariots and his multitude, and I will deliver him unto thine hand. So the Mosai already told him that we was going to win the battle. All right? The Mosai told him that, but he was being what? He was being slothful. So the Mosai spoke to his prophet, the prophetess at this time, which was Deborah, to do what? To tell him the same thing, to confirm it. Hey, you need to get up and do this. God is speaking to you. Read. Verse 8. Uh -huh. And Barak said unto her, if thou wilt go with me, then I will go. But if thou wilt not go with me, then I will not go. And I want y'all to see something. At this time, Israel was not in its glory. We were sinful. All right? That's why the Most High God had to raise her up. Verse 8. Mm -hmm. And Barak said unto her, If thou wilt go with me, then I will go. But if thou wilt not go with me, then I will not go. You see that thing right there? So he was already told by the Lord now uh, Deborah comes and confirms it, and he's still fearful. Mm -hmm. He's slothful, and he's fearful. All right, give me that in Luke 19, just showing you that the Most High God, he could use anybody to fulfill his will, okay? And Deborah was just that. Give me Luke 19, 37. Read down for me. The book of Luke, chapter 19 and verse 37. Come on. And when he was come nigh, even now, at the de descent of the Mount of Olives, mm -hmm. the whole multitude of disciples began to rejoice and praise God with a loud voice for all the mighty works that they had seen, mm -hmm. saying, Blessed be the king that cometh in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. So it said that the whole multitude of disciples, they were, they were uh, giving thanks to God for the works that Christ was doing. Okay, read on. Verse 39. Mm -hmm. And some of the Pharisees from among the multitude said unto him, Master, rebuke thy disciples. Read. And he answered and said unto them. Watch this. I tell you that if these should hold their peace. Meaning. If they don't worship, okay, or, or give thanks, watch this. The stones will immediately cry out. Meaning what? The Most High, he could use any vessel. He could use anything for his uh, purpose and his will, okay? Right. Let's go back to Judges. Judges chapter 4, verse 8. Come on. Judges chapter 4 and verse 8. Uh-huh. And Barak said unto her, If thou wilt go with me, then I will go. But if thou wilt not go with me, then I will not go. Verse 9. And she said, I will surely go with thee, notwithstanding the journey that thou takest shall not be for thine honor. Mm -hmm. For the Lord shall sell Caesarea into the hand of a woman. And Deborah arose and went with Barak to Kadesh. Now jump up to verse uh, 14 real quick. Verse 14. And Deborah said unto Barak, up for this is a day in which the Lord had delivered Caesarea into thine hand. Come on. Is not the Lord gone out before thee? Mm -hmm. So Barak went down from Mount Tabor and 10,000 men after him. And All right. So that's uh, Deborah. She's doing what she's signifying or confirming. Hey, we got the battle in our hands. All right, go do it. Because he needed that push. He didn't want to go by himself. All right. So if you want to know what she was used for, she was used as a vessel to do what? Get him off of his behind mm -hmm. so he could fulfill the will of God. All right. Um, as you read down, we ended up uh, winning the battle. Everybody was dead. All right. And then JL, uh, she put a, uh, a stake through um, Caesarea's temple. Now, I want to jump up to verse chapter 5. Let's go to chapter 5 real quick. And I want you to start at verse 6. Watch this. Judges 5 and verse 6. Mm -hmm. In the days of Shamgar, the son of Anath, in the days of Jael, 
the highways were unoccupied, and the travelers walked through byways. Come on. The inhabitants of the villages ceased. They ceased in Israel until that I, Deborah, rose, that I arose a mother in Israel. Watch this. They chose new gods. Then was war in the gates. Was there a shield or spear seen among 40,000 in Israel? Watch this. My heart is toward the governors of Israel. So this is the key, all right? She said her heart was toward the governors of Israel. Those are the leaders of Israel, the men of Israel. So meaning what? She was in agreement. She wasn't trying to overstep her bounds. All right, she was in accordance to the will of God. Read it again. My heart is toward the governors of Israel Come on. that offereth themselves willingly among the people. Mm -hmm. Bless ye the Lord. Bless ye the Lord. Another example of our, one of our foremothers. Give me the book of Judith, the eighth chapter real quick. Okay. So Israel was going off. Okay. And she wanted to be the help. Okay. God used her to support and get us back in order. Similar to what Judith did. Uh, give me Judith chapter eight. Um, start at verse... Um, Judith chapter 8, and I want you to start at verse 9. The book of Judith, chapter 8 and verse 9. Come on. Now when she heard the evil words of the people against the governor, th that they fainted for lack of water. Uh -huh. For Judith had heard all the words of Ozias, had spoken unto them, and that he had sworn to deliver the city unto the Assyrians after five days. All right, so she heard the complaints. <coughs> All right, of the leaders, okay? So she, she didn't uh, stay quiet. When she saw wickedness, she had to speak on it, okay? That's what a righteous sister would do. She wouldn't uh, wait till everything's good and start uh, trying to abuse the people, speak against her leaders, okay? She wouldn't try to usurp authority over the men. No, she just spoke up in a cause for righteousness. Read on. Verse 10, mm -hmm. then she sent her waiting woman that had the government of all things that she had to call Osiris and Chabris and Charmis, the ancient of the city. Read on. And they came unto her, and she had unto them, Hear me now, O you governors of the inhabitants of Bethulia, uh -huh. for your words that ye have spoken before the people this day are not right. You see that? She told them what it is. It's not right what you're saying. Even though you hold that office, that it's not right. Read. Touching this oath which ye made and pronounced between God and you, and have promised to deliver the city to our enemies, mm -hmm. unless within these days the Lord turned to help you. So instead of complaining, she's like, no, we need to go seek the Lord's face. Mm -hmm. We need to get our act together, okay? That's the same thing um, Deborah was doing, okay? Uh, jump up, jump to verse 24. Verse 24. Come on. Now, therefore, O brethren, let us show an example to our brethren, uh -huh. because their hearts depend on us and the sanctuary and the house, and the altar rest upon us. Right, because we was about to get delivered to our enemies. Read on. Verse 25. <coughs> Moreover, let us give thanks to the Lord our God, which, try, which trieth us, even as he did our fathers. Come on. Remember what things he did to Abraham, and how he tried Isaac, and what happened to Jacob and Mesopotamia of Syria, when he kept the sheep of Laban, his mother's brother. For he hath not tried us in the fire, as he did them, mm -hmm. for the examination of their hearts. Neither hath he taken vengeance on us, but the Lord doth scourge them that come near unto him. Come on. To admonish them. To teach them, to correct them. Read on. Verse 28. Mm -hmm. Then said Osiris to her, all that thou hast spoken, hast thou spoken with a good heart. And there is none that may gainsay thy words. There you go. The same way uh, when she spoke to... Um, um, sheesh, what's his name? Barack. Uh, Barack, excuse me, when she spoke to Barack in Judges 4 and 5, that's the same way she spoke to the men, Ozias right here. Mm. Um, jump down to verse 31, watch this. Verse 31, uh -huh. therefore, now pray thou for us, because thou art a godly woman, mm -hmm. and the Lord will send us rain to fear our cisterns, and, we'll sh and we shall faint no more. There you go. She did what? She didn't usurp authority over the man. She spoke good words to them to encourage them and to get them back into trusting the will of God. Right. right? So we hope you understand uh, Deborah's place. All right. And we pray that um, if you did struggle with this, you ain't struggling with it no more. All right. My name is Captain Mattathias. And I'm Officer Losias. All right. And with that, we say shalom. Shalom. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. 
IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission, minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold, from Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.